As usual, welcome to the Duke's Farm. My name is Dennis Duke Onyala. If you're new here, please ensure that you subscribe because I do not want you to miss a single bit of any content that I do upload. So a lot of farmers have been asking me recently, Dennis, my kids are dying. And I understand that losing kids can actually be a very, very devastating or saddest thing in rabbit farming. And as we all know that rabbit business rotates entirely around the kids and not the mother's talk that you have. This means that the more kids you manage to raise, the more money you make at the end of the day. So this is why it is important to watch this video until the end because I'll be delving into what I personally think and believe could be the reason as to why your kids are dying at the age of four weeks, three weeks, uh, five weeks, six weeks, or at the winning stage. But I also want to give you a couple of, you know, um, guidance in terms of what you should do, what you shouldn't do, among many other things. There are a couple of things that are out or beyond our own control, but the ones that are within our control, I'm exactly going to discuss that with you uh, so that you can know how to handle your kids so that you do not lose the profits that you intend to uh, have at the end of the day. So I'll be right back. I'm glad you're still watching The Duke's Farm. If you're new, please make it a point to subscribe don't forget i do sell giant rabbit breeds right from three months up to five months around there for those of you who are looking for uh, breeding stock please hit me up on this number and i'll mo be more than glad to help you now as we all know or as some of you may not be aware that uh during that winning stage of kids there are a lot of you know reasons that lead to uh the death of those kids but one among them that i find it very common is this is a stage where these kids are transitioning from milk from their mother's milk into actually eating solid food somebody will argue and say oh but they've been eating on their mother's food yes that's very true but here they're entirely surviving on solid food as opposed to when they were with their mother and then they were eating some bit of solid food and then they, they, you know, breast milk here and there. So here they are just transitioning and therefore their system is not yet strong. Their system is not yet built up or built up to actually uh, be able to fight some of the diseases or issues that may arise uh, during the course of the tra their transition. Uh, some of them don't have, you know, uh, first of all, rabbits, as rabbits, not just kids, have a very sensitive digestive system. Anything foreign, anything that may not be uh, uh, in their daily routine may cause havoc, may cause some distractions. And for the kids, it becomes worse because they don't have uh, any antibodies have not yet developed very well to fight some of these uh, conditions. Take, for example, bloating, costiosis, among many other things. So it is very important that as you transition, please, for my case, well, the transition is usually smooth. I start with giving them some small food for survival as they learn, as they transition into actually surviving alone on that solid food. So it's very important. Another reason uh, or another thing that you can do is you can try as much as you can to give them a, a, a lot of dry matter as opposed to green content that may have a lot of water because then you're exposing your kids. But before I even go further, losing kids starts from the time you breed your rabbits, okay? It does not start from at one month. While it's true they die mostly at one month, the problem starts from way back when you decide <clears throat> to breed your breeds, your rabbits. Please and please, point number one, avoid breeding rabbits that are related. In rabbit farming, we call this inbreeding. Now, inbreeding is a, a, a process where rabbits of the same mother, the same father, tend to breed. That is not allowed because of its numerous challenges, including death at one month, among others. Now, inbreeding or inbreeding is rabbits' biggest problem because many farmers have failed at record keeping. Now, inbreeding may cause the, rab the bone rabbits to die weak, if at all they do not die from the womb, and if at all they are bone, they are very susceptible 
to very many diseases, very many conditions. That's why if a condition or a disease attacks them, they're usually or easily wiped out from your farm. So please and please endeavor to avoid inbreeding in your farms. But like I said, the problem stems from when you breed your rabbits. First of all, the conditions in which your, uh, your mother rabbit is in is equally very important because weak rabbits will give you weak babies that may not be in position to fight. I've done all these videos, but it's just like I felt the need because people have come up recently asking for why their rabbits are dying at one month so i needed uh to clarify on a couple of things so the time you breed ensure that your mother rabbit is actually in a very proper condition you give it enough iron you give it enough food you give it enough fiber enough water enough and clean water please okay because when i say enough water somebody may just uh you know get water from anywhere and give the rabbit so ensure that your rabbit gets all these nutrients before it actually gives birth to your kid now after they've been born ensure that the cage is clean the nesting box is clean some of you the nesting boxes from the time from the day the mother rabbit gives birth they've been dirty the mother rabbit has dumped their poop urine the kids have also done the same and at the end of the day they get infected so poor hygiene causes bacterial infections now these bacterial infections could also be uh, coming from the mothers uh, dropping their poops and then you do not clean those cages very very well as time goes on these uh, poop keeps piling up they create some unconducive atmosphere and as a result they create you know they they, they 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 become the cause of bacteria infections among others which affect your rabbits the young kids and because like i told you in the beginning their system is still susceptible they are bound to actually die okay and sometimes they may not show signs that's the biggest problem and the moment they don't show signs it means they're actually going to die before you actually notice it now another reason why rabbits die while they are young maybe around one week or rather one month is the issue of coccidiosis now coccidiosis is a highly contagious spiranozo uh, or sporozo infection in rabbits with low prognosis of healing. Coccidiosis, first of all, is caused by a single cold or celled parasite uh, or protozoa called a meria. Sorry, these are very uh, biological terms that are giving me a hard time, but well, I hope you understand a point or two. Coccidiosis is very highly contagious. It can move from one rabbit to another, to another, and before you know it, the entire farm uh, is actually sick and treatment is usually well tolerated especially in adult rabbits although acutely infected or young bunnies can struggle to recover from severe infections and as a result those young kids may end up dying because while it's true the adults one can actually get treated these ones may not get uh, or may not respond to treatment very very rapidly as the adult ones now, another condition that causes sudden death of these little animals or these kids of ours is called enteritis. As the name goes, enteritis. If it is enteritis, their bellies will be hard and bloated and after they will die. So please take note that if it's enteritis, their bellies will be hard and bloated and eventually they will end up dying. They don't usually show any other symptoms even before they die. So, how do you go about uh, this thing called enteritis? First, is give little hay, which can help prevent winning problems like enteritis because it makes it easier for them to adjust to solid food and provides more fiber to keep the digestive tract moving. Like I told you, at this winning stage, you'd want to avoid as many greens as you can okay give it in small quantities in small amounts but give enough of hay now unfortunately in uganda the biggest problem is that we do not have a good hay supply uh, and therefore very many farmers and some of those are actually not willing to buy because hay is actually bought uh, somebody looks at it or parting with fifteen thousand shillings they forget that they're actually losing their capital they're actually losing their profit so what you need to do is provide enough fresh hay 
not any hay. By the way, fresh hay is equally good because at that stage, it still has uh, a lot of nutrients at the end of the day, a lot of fiber, uh, some carbohydrates and some, uh, you know, protein. And the good hays on the market should be Chloris Guyana, uh, there's Timothy hay, which unfortunately in Uganda is not very common. And then there's alfalfa hay. Now, alfalfa can be grown anywhere and you can cut. And rabbits can eat them while fresh green or you can dry them in, in a dry, rather in a shed. Why do we dry in a shed and not directly under the sun? Is because when you dry it under the sun, they, the hay will lose the nutrients that are in there. But when you dry it under a shade, the content, the nutrition value will not, uh, you know, uh, go away or, or, or get lost in the, in, the, in the process of actually drying your hay. So please endeavor to give your rabbits enough hay and little quantity of, uh, you know, uh, uh, greens and then some little quantity of pellets, and then some fresh, clean water. I emphasize fresh, clean water. Now, one other biggest challenge why rabbits die at one month is when the health of the mother has been compromised. And by this, I mean sometimes um, the mother rabbit gives birth and then it fails to get all the nutrients that it requires to actually nurse these babies or it, it is sick or it's struggling with snuffles or it's struggling with costiosis itself or any other bacterial infections that may deprive it of good health. It can pass those diseases through the young ones through milk, through breastfeeding, through association, through staying together. Remember, we only win at six weeks of age. So this entire period, when this rabbit, mother rabbit is sick, it can actually pass over. So ensure that the mother rabbit is in good condition. Uh, you give them some uh, glucovit, some multivitamin, so that you boost the immunity. If the mother's immunity is strong, it can pass some immunity to the kids as well. So please ensure uh, that you follow some of these guidelines and, 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 and keep your rabbits or kids alive until the time you actually sell them. Now, that's all I had for you today. Thank you so much for watching until the end. My name is Dennis Duke Onyala. Ensure you subscribe. Ensure you follow me on different social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Dennis Duke UG. Hit me up if you need anything in regards to rabbit training. Um, what else? Uh, kids or you need any consultation or you need anything including cage construction among others. Until then, it's a goodbye.